Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of The Sam's Report and as you can see by those watching the video I forgot to turn that light around and whatever, uh, light is now correctly positioned. Anyways, so interesting week this week, uh, Monday was Martin Luther King week, or King Day, and so not a lot of news like officially but there was some, uh, th th there's some stuff going on and uh, you know, we'll just dive in here because it's kind of hard to explain. Um, and, and we'll get into this, the end of the show, we'll get into some things I'm thinking about building again, um, around the rumor mill and that kind of stuff. So anyways, um, got, got a big trip coming up here very soon. We'll talk about more of that, about that next week. And I actually bought some Bose Quiet Comfort uh, QC35 headphones. And if I don't like them, I'm going to take them back. That's really just a random aside, but I can see them in the background. So, uh, let's go ahead and dive in here, shall we? So, Microsoft announced this week that they are expanding their cloud service provider, CSP Program. And what this is, this is a third-party uh, vendor that sells Microsoft products. And what they're now allowing these guys to do is to basically give away Windows 10. Now, they're not really giving it away. You know, there were a lot of headlines like, free Windows 10 is back. It is, but it isn't. So the way you get into this CSP program, if you're a small business, is you pay a perpetual Windows license. So for Windows 10, I believe Pro, it's $7 a month. And for Windows 10 Enterprise, it's $14 a month per user. And so what Microsoft is now doing is that any business that's enrolled in this program, if they have a Windows 7 or 8.1 machine, they're going to give them a copy of Windows 10 for free. Which is actually quite nice because previous to this, which made no sense at all, was that you had to actually buy, if you're a small business, you had to buy Windows 10 Pro at $199 and then you had to pay ongoing support. It didn't make any sense. But now, now that's, they're doing that for free, uh, you know, with the caveats that you're in that program. So go check that out if you're a small business or, or medium or sometimes even large businesses uh, and take advantage of that program. LinkedIn, which Microsoft bought for $26.2 billion, is now officially theirs. And one of the first things that's happened since they've bought them is that the, the whole site was redesigned and relaunched. And people are like saying, hey, this looks exactly like Office, etc. Okay, let's, let's step back for a second. Microsoft probably had nothing to do with that redesign. First of all, when you're going through an acquisition like that, Microsoft is not allowed to control... Uh, there's some caveats there. It's not 100%. But they, they can't control the operation of LinkedIn. Because there's, because if the, the acquisition falls apart, uh, they can't go back and sue Microsoft for making bad business decisions. There's a lot of reasons, but Microsoft probably had absolutely nothing to do with it. It was not influenced by Office unless it was independently influenced. So, uh, anyways, LinkedIn overhauled, done, and there you go. So, go check it out. I've, I've started to vaguely update my stuff again. I don't know, maybe I'll start pushing content that way. I've never really used LinkedIn a whole lot, but I know that there are some people who are very loyal to it, much like probably I am to Twitter, and it's a big deal for them. So LinkedIn, Microsoft now owns it. Expect to see Microsoft E things happening a lot more frequently. Um, I, God, I can never pronounce this. I called it SUSE Linux. It's S-U-S-E. Some people call it SUSE. Some people call it SUSE. Whatever the heck you want to call it. Uh, Bash on Windows 10 runs within Ubuntu, and so if you want to run a different flavor of Linux, you can now do that with SUSE or SUSE or SUSE. Um, they are now supporting the Windows subsystem for Linux inside of Windows 10, and so there you go. You can do all that stuff. HoloLens is also making its way to Japan. HoloLens, cool, whatever. If you're in Japan and need a HoloLens, you can now get one there. Uh, other things happening this week, new build of Windows 10 dropped, and there's a couple interesting things. There's an EPUB bookstore, which leaked out previously. Um, you can go into the Windows store, you can buy a, a book, and this is this is what I don't understand. Uh, you can buy a book through the Windows store, and if you want to read it, you, you do it in Edge. It just seems odd, I don't know. There's something that doesn't feel very copacetic about that. But whatever, you can buy them in the store, and read them in Edge, and... If you're a big buyer of digital books, it, it's the thing that I find interesting about this is that Microsoft hasn't had a lot of success with Groove. Um, Xbox Live has been a pretty good success, but they haven't a lot of success with video selling either. And so now they're moving into books. I don't know if this is just like a really like to, to set up these stores is just really cheap. And it's like, yeah, you know what? If we make a couple hundred thousand dollars, a couple million dollars, who cares? But I, 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 I don't know. I, like I would still, if I was going to buy a book, I'd probably go to Amazon uh, before I would go to the Microsoft store. Th that's just me personally, but whatever. That's um, 
you know, that's what they got going on. Turn that down a little bit. Got it. There we go. That way it's not a super hot white spot. Although I did a terrible job and you actually see there's a wire. Man, this is a struggling this week. I changed up some lighting in here and that's why things are all a little bit goofy from time to time. Uh, other things that are coming, you can do it a custom accent color, which we knew was going to arrive. Uh, <laughs> you live and die by the accent color. There you go. You can now set it with a custom thing. But uh, da, da, da. anyways, uh, there's also a new performance setting feature coming. Now, this is a, this is in the latest build of Windows 10. It's not coming to every PC, and it's only coming to select systems that meet the defined requirements. And it's not even wired up. It's quite literally just a visual cue at this point, according to the oddly worded um, release notes by Microsoft. But what it is is you you can adjust the performance essentially on the fly. And they say it's not quite the same thing as turning on battery saver or changing the power configs, but it's basically a slider. Apparently OEMs want this and what it allows you to do is like, let's say, hey, uh, you want a few extra FPS while you're gaming, you can drag that slider to the right. Uh, you need better battery life, you can drag that slider to the left. I don't really, I, I need to dig in deeper to understand how this is different than the power management settings that are already built into Windows. Maybe it's just a better UX experience, but you might see that in there too. So that's kind of the new build, nothing too crazy. Like. I think we're starting to see kind of the, the tail end of the new features that are coming. Um, features that are not coming, Microsoft announced that uh, the people bar is not going to arrive. Apparently the people didn't catch the bus and didn't make it. So they didn't explain why it's not coming. They are pushing it to, they say, the next update, which we know as Redstone 3, which I believe is coming in the fall. Uh, fall or early winter, probably around October-ish. Don't quote me on that, but that's roughly what I'm thinking right now. And so I, I don't know if they're going to build some like big social update for the fall or something, but the people bar is not coming. Uh, the last time, I, for whatever reason, I get real salty about this, that when they say, hey, a feature's delayed, I, I instantly go back to Vista Ultimate Extras. And let me explain why I get so upset about this. So when Vista Ultimate Extras was, or Vista Ultimate was on sale, which was, I got a decade ago or whatever, um, I was in my teens and I saved up all my money. Like, I, you know, I, I, I was working on extra hours, I was cutting grass, and I bought Vista Ultimate. Like, I, I, it was expensive. I think it was like 500 bucks or something like that. It was not cheap, especially for a teenager. And I, I put a whole bunch of money into this thing, thinking, great, I'm going to get all this stuff. This all cool stuff. It's going to be the best laptop and desktop experience ever. And then the shit never arrived. Uh, I still get pissed off thinking about that because I, I, I remember like plotting out how many hours extra I had. I was working at a like mom and pop soccer store and just like literally like helping people buy shoes and soccer apparel. And I kept thinking about how many extra hours I'd have to work so I could afford gas and insurance for the month and then be have enough money to buy toys being Vista Ultimate Extra, uh, whatever. So anyways, People Bar um, has been delayed. They didn't give a specific reason why, but... I can't imagine them just completely cutting that feature, considering what's odd is how much how much uh, time they gave it at the studio event, saying, hey, contact your people quickly, and they ignored other features, and so, anyways, uh, people bar, people, apparently the people bar is closed for business right now, closed for business. Speaking of Windows 10, much to my dismay, and Microsoft's, um, God, it, it, I hate this, uh, if you have Chrome pinned to your taskbar, Microsoft has begun putting an advertisement above it. I haven't had it pop up for me yet, but what it does is says, hey, come download the Microsoft Personal Shopping Chrome extension if you're using Chrome. Why? Like, this is, um, why, why Microsoft, this, is a, this isn't even a slippery slope. They introduced advertisements with Windows 8. Uh, they expanded the advertisements with Windows 10 in the start bar or start menu. And then they started doing things with Edge in the start, uh, uh, in the taskbar. And now they're moving to promoting their extensions. It, it's in a freaking extension that they're uh, souring the Windows 10 experience with over a pop of over. It just, it just doesn't, I don't know, like... This is just the new normal, and I got to get used to it. But I hate like notifications and pop ups and that kind of crap. Um, and yeah, so I, I feel like this is the beginning of the end. We're going to only, it's only going to get worse. That's the thing. Like, if it was just once, one thing, fine. But that's how they do this, right? They do, it was, at first, it was just ads 
in the uh, start menu. And now it's just ads in the start menu and the taskbar. And then it's going to be just ads in the start menu and the taskbar and in action center. And then it's going to be just ads in the start menu, the action center, uh, taskbar, and in the people bar. Like it's, it's not going to slow down. It, this is a, the perfect analogy here is when oil was really expensive, the airline started charging you $25 to check a bag. Oil is really cheap. Do they still charge $25? Hell yeah, they do because they can make more money that way and be more profitable. This is the, the exact same thing that's going to happen. So the, this is a, a real ad, in my opinion, um, on the taskbar. The edge one, you can like, be like, ah, whatever. Um, it's kind of a tips thing. But this is like a true ad. Like saying, hey, come download our stuff. And it's only a matter of time for or a third party says, hey, we will, we'll give Microsoft $10 million if we can put a little flag over uh, uh, Edge and says download Adblock Plus or whatever. So anyways, if you see any other ads, definitely let me know. But that's kind of been the new one that's been popping up lately. So moving, you know, kind of moving away from the, the Windows 10 world here for a second, slightly a little bit. Uh, Microsoft is going to have ho have holographic developer kits uh, for cheap VR headsets at GDC. That was kind of a tough to read. What that means is, so Microsoft has these head-mounted displays, which I covered a bunch of them at CES from Dell, Lenovo, Acer, HP, um, and maybe Asus. I can't remember if they were doing it or whatever. Or three glasses out of China too. So they've got a bunch coming. Uh, the thing is, is you need apps and the, kind of this stuff, right? The apps has always been the Achilles heel of Microsoft recently, you know, back in the early and late nineties and early two thousands apps were or developers were all Microsoft, but now it's like, Oh God, we need the developers come play with us. But th anyways, they're going to be giving these things away. I, I shouldn't say giving away. I don't know that for a fact. Uh, they're going to be handing them out or offering them at the game developers conference, February 27th through March 3rd. And so this is an interesting thing to me. Because they're going to a game developer conference to give out these head-mounted displays. And we already knew, I, I was part of the leaks that came out that I talked about with Scorpio and some other sites talked about with Scorpio, that, hey, it's going to support VR experiences. So what seems to make a lot of sense here is that the VR experiences for Scorpio might be powered by these head-mounted displays because they only need a USB and I think an HDMI cable. That's not a lot of, like, requirement. I think it's USB 3.0. So I'm actually wondering if the Scorpio is just going to use these third-party head-mounted displays, and that's it. Like, I don't, I don't know if Microsoft's going to offer one. I mean, think about that. Do, do they really need to? Uh, they're again, like, put the pieces together here, right? They're they're giving away the head-mounted. They're they're giving away. They're getting the VR experiences set up for at the game developer conference. They have a console launching around Christmas time. Put the pieces together. It, it seems like this is the route that they're going to go uh, for Scorpio. So I'll be curious to see if anybody knows anything different about them launching their own head-mounted display. I, I, I would be surprised, actually, at this point, because they're clearly going the OEM route, throwing them a bone, and a lot of them are buying in. Interesting stuff. I, I'll be curious to see what comes out of the Game Developer Conference and uh, the, the stuff that comes out of these dev kits, because, again, you need applications for a product to launch. And that, you know, this is them trying to seed those waters. And I, I don't know, I, you know, I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic that these head mounted displays will get cheap enough that they'll be um, more of a commodity rather than a rarity. Like right now, the Vive and that kind of stuff, that's really expensive. And so I, I don't know what the magic price point is for this type of advice, because remember, this is a peripheral to a PC. And so uh, we tend to think of it, the the magical price point for consoles is somewhere around 300 bucks for when once it drops below that it starts to hit mass market these things are supposed to be coming in three to four hundred it, it, it's going to be close it might take a little bit of time for these things to hit mass market appeal but um, i'm sure i'll be buying uh, what right now knowing absolutely nothing else about them i'd buy the dell one just because it it's white and it looks looks neat all the other ones are kind of i don't know not as exciting i not as exciting is probably the best way to describe them. Uh, anyways, Microsoft announced also this week that they are making the Xbox UI faster, specifically like the guide experience. It's like, thank God. Um, the, I, I absolutely love my Xbox One. You can see here's my controller uh, right here. I, I play this thing on that TV back there every day. Every day it's on. Um, at least Monday through Friday, I can guarantee you. it's Every day it's on. And so the fact that they're going to make the UI experience faster... Yes, I mean, like nobody's going to get upset about a more optimized UI, and it, it's only—I just wish they would have gotten to this realization faster. 
but they're, they're making the Xbox One, you know, UI faster, better, whatever. Uh, interesting side note here, and Microsoft has taken their sweet time in getting back to me. I'm checking my email now to see if they have. Um, nope, not yet. Uh, well, it's early in Redmond. But, and I'm hoping I'm not reading too much into this, and that's why I haven't written anything or even really talked about it. So, in the latest update for the Surface Studio and Surface Pro 4, uh, the firmwares that came out on January 18th, two days ago, I'm just going to read the line item. The Surface Embedded Controller Firmware version, whatever, adds support for an upcoming product release. Surface System Aggregator uh, adds support for an upcoming product release. Yeah. What's this upcoming product release? I My gut tells me they're probably talking about the Creators Update, but why didn't they just list Creators Update then? If the Creators Update is out there, everybody knows it, it's... Uh, a product brand name it's not some secret anymore and so i've asked microsoft says hey can you can you give me a clarify clarification and i try to be really uh general about it to see if they come back if they come back and say anything it's like you know what if they unless they come back and say this is specifically for the creators update then i won't write anything but if they come back and just say you know what's for upcoming products that we're not ready to talk about then that's like huge uh because that kind of just tells you that things are on the horizon so um anyways those are out there. You can go read them. It's all on the web. It's on their blog, their TechNet blog. Uh, just go look for the Surface Studio and Pro 4 change log, and you will find these exact words. Sad news. Sad news, as somebody already pointed out in the forum. Uh, Microsoft is killing its Cache app, C-A-C-H-E app. And what this was, it was like a universal clipboard for everything. And they're killing it. You know, just like OneDrive, or OneDrive, not OneDrive. Uh, one clip. Took me a minute there. One clip. Cache sailing off into the distance. Microsoft is killing it probably because it's too useful and nice. Uh, my gut again tells me that they're probably building this into Windows, which means, come on guys, if you're going to kill this app, don't kill it until uh, the feature is available. So either it's coming like really soon or it's Redstone 3. And if it's Redstone 3, it's like, Jesus guys, you could have just left this stuff running until then and let us have this nice little feature. But um, there was a leak at one point that said there's a universal clipboard toggle coming to Windows 10. It wasn't enabled by default. It's not enabled in these builds. It hasn't shown up yet, but maybe that's the reason why. It's like, hey, that's the feature, and that's what I'm hoping, and that's what I'm crossing my fingers for, because a universal clipboard app on everything would make my life much, much easier. Oh, da, da, da. That, that is good. Um, Max asks, and I assume he's asking me, he said, do you mind if we follow an Xbox? Absolutely not. I play with readers actually a couple times a week, especially when I'm playing Call of Duty. Uh, my Xbox... <laughs> Gamertag is exact same as my identity everywhere. It's just BDSAMS. So if you see me on and you're playing the same game, definitely just shoot me a message. Uh, it, it super helps too if you say, like, you know me from Twitter or something like that. I, I, just because you get those random... Like, anybody who plays online, like, you play a room in Call of Duty, and the next room you go into, people will message you trying to team up and stuff. And I generally don't join those. But, you know, if, if you know who I am and, and we chat and whatever, just shoot me a message. I'd, I'd love to play. I'm always looking for more people to play with. Uh, I play Smite, a, sh a sh shoot load. <laughs> I was about to, uh, whatever. I play Smite a lot. And I also play Call of Duty Modern Warfare, uh, the new one. The old, Well, the new one, that's the old, old one, the new old one. So that's what I play quite a bit. But Cash Dead. Uh, other things that popped out this week, and I think this might have gotten overblown a little bit on the web, is Microsoft patented a foldable screen phone. Now, I, I say might have overblown. I probably wasn't helping the situation. When Microsoft patented the Surface Studio, the patent, the actual design and drawing of the device, uh, was identical to what they released. And now there were some modular components of the Surface Hub in that patent that they didn't do, but the actual design drawings were the 100% same of what they released. So Microsoft patents like this foldable mobile device and everyone's like, hey, uh, duh, 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 duh. they're like, maybe this is the Surface Mobile. And granted, I don't 100% know, but I do want to point out that a video came back out in 2009 where Microsoft had a vision video and they had a foldable phone in this thing. And it, the patent lines up the patent drawing lines up identical to this vision video that they released. And so I don't know if they're truly making a foldable phone. I would love it. They've tried this attempt several times. There was a device called the courier, uh, which actually was probably based on the 2009 video, it probably went 2009. Then they tried to make the courier. That project got canceled. And so I don't know if they're going to do that for the surface mobile. Um, I don't know if it's actually going to be called surface phone. We'll see. Um, 
yeah to take that as a whatever you want i don't know if it's going to be called surface phone um so this patent is out do with it whatever you want but just know that i think it actually derives from some of this older stuff that they had shown off at one point a um, couple other things, just random other stuff. So I'm gonna try. I'm trying out Project Phi. I'm, I'm going on an international trip here relatively soon, and I've heard great things. Paul loves Project Phi, so I'm giving it a spin along with those uh, QC comfort. You can't really see them. I mean, they're right here. These guys. This is what I bought. Um, oh man, that probably made a loud noise. These guys. Nothing crazy. Um, I've never actually had a pair of proper noise isolating headphones, so this will be interesting for me. Um, okay, so I, I talked about this at the very beginning. So many, many, many years ago, I used to run a website called Trekor, which I rebranded into Source. It's still alive, I believe. I should check. Um, it's called sorsed.com. It should still be up. Yes, it is. And so I haven't updated it in several years. But what it is, is Sourced, uh, sorsed.com tracks tracked I, should, I have to use past tense here even though i love this product it's just i'll explain why it tracked web rumors and it was a very manual process so a company a website comes out and says iphone 8 launching october 10th you go into the website and you log that radar or you log that radar you log that rumor and then on october 10th it would pop up on the back end and we would, and i would rate it and what this did was this just tracked web rumors it was great and it had a leaderboard and it was cool and i loved it it was the problem was it was so labor intensive you it's hard to explain how much work we go into actually scoring a rumor uh because it's not black and white because okay what if they say what if it's january 10th and they say a rumor or iphone's gonna launch on october 10th but it launches october 12th so technically that's wrong uh, based on what they said but they pitched this in January. So it's actually really right, but it's technically wrong. So there, there's like this big gray area of rating stuff. And not to mention, like what if it's uh, iPhone 8 comes in 5.5 inch size and then it launches and it's a 5.2. So they got the date right, but the size wrong. And how do you rate this stuff? It, it, it's actually much harder than you think and it um, I, I didn't give it up. Well, I did give it up, but we, we pivoted it into another service that we eventually became profitable and, uh, ran with that for a little bit or a long bit. And so I, I've been tempted to kind of relaunch this cause I really do miss it. I re I say that because it, it, somebody reminded me today, Michael Young, uh, I think it was Michael Young. Was it him? I think it was, let me just double check. Cause he just Michael West. Michael West, not Michael Young. Gosh, lots of Michael tweeting at me today. Michael West uh, mentioned to me today, he said about um, how Windows Central said that Redstone 2 and 3 were going to be huge mobile releases. And you can go read their posts, and I'm not going to bash them too much. But it, it reminded me of the fact that there needs to be some sort of accountability on the web for writing rumors, because obviously we know now that Redstone 2 has absolutely nothing to do with mobile. In fact, it's probably... You might even say it's anti-mobile because they're making it more desktop-like than they are improving the mobile features. And so there needs to be some sort of accountability. And I, I'm tempted to, to try to relaunch Sourced. Uh, one thing, I need to find another developer because my primary developer on there is locked up with other things. Um, the other thing, too, is I'd love to find a way to actually crowdsource this stuff. And I say crowdsource because that's the best way I can go about doing this. And I don't know if I would launch it through a medium like Therat. Uh, because then I could get some developer help uh, and that kind of stuff. And I know that there's a community there. But what I really need are actually people to help rate and submit stuff. Because it's it, it takes up, it eats up so much time. I can't be, like there was literally days where I would spend five, six hours just rating rumors. And granted, I loved it and it, it gives you some unique content. But yeah, so... So that, that, that's noodling on my head. I, I, I got to figure out if I can find enough resources to actually go about and pursue this. And we probably have to rebuild the entire thing again. I could extract the database out of it to get the list of rumors and whatnot. Um, but yeah, I, I would need to uh, go back through and it would be pretty labor intensive, but I think it'd be fun. I think it would be fun. So that's what's going on there. Uh, we do have a bunch of a couple questions this week, which I will dive into here. Readers from the questions are probably my favorite thing in the world, mostly because you guys have a lot of intelligent angles. 
and things that I can't think about on the fly. Uh, the Quantum Fro asks, given the news around Windows apps and stores, do you think Microsoft should get out of the consumer business? No. Uh, um, let me let me qualify that. I could see them exiting the consumer business for things like Groove, uh, their their bookstore which they just launched, video, and like those commoditized. I don't know if that's a correct word. Those content goods. I don't want to see them get out of things like Surface Book and Surface Pro because I think these are a very much a benefit to the market. I think Microsoft has done a wonderful job with that kind of stuff. I don't want to see them get rid of like Xbox and that, but I wouldn't mind seeing them get rid of some of their kind of auxiliary related products that just don't really make sense. Like I can't imagine Groove being a huge revenue driver and all that stuff. Um, you know, leave that to the guys that are doing it well, like Spotify, Amazon's actually doing all right. Google does it okay. Apple's fine. I think my, Microsoft was looking at it as a way to monetize Windows 10. And I, I don't know. They have the data. So, uh, anyways. So, other question. We only got two this week because I put the thread up way late. Uh, Brian75 says, this should probably be under We Help Wednesday. But, anyways, I'll see what I can do here. Uh, but the thought... Uh, but thought you maybe you could help. I reserved an Outlook email address for my young son at, who at this point has no reason to utilize email except for Xbox. Like an idiot, I forgot the password. Uh, I get the message, there's a temporary problem with the service. Please try again if you continue. Okay, so I, I can't help ex if you forgot your password. Um, hopefully you set up a recovery account. The other thing you're going to have to figure out how to do if you want Microsoft to truly help you is you're going to have to be able to prove that that's your email address. You can imagine if you go to Microsoft and say, hey, I forgot my password and I don't have a recovery account, they're going to be like, you're just trying to hack this account. Like, what's the point? Um, so if you can find a way to prove that it's your email address, I would actually start messaging Microsoft support and saying like, look, here's the email I got from when I set up the account. I have forgotten it and try to explain. They might be able to help you. I would be very, that's a touchy thing when, when you get locked out of your account about how they're going to help you recover. But again, if you set it up and you set up a proper recovery account, you should have gotten an email or some sort of notification that says, hey, this is the backup one uh, for this account. And then you might be able to get in that way. That would be my expectation about how you could potentially go about recovering that. And so the, just two questions this week. Nothing too crazy. Uh, and meh asks in uh, the live chat, the website that I'm referring to, the Tech Rumors, is sourced. S-O-R-S-E-D dot com. It's still up and running. <laughs> yeah, If people start hitting it, it's probably going to collapse because it's on a very cheap hosted site because I've kept it around for years. But... Um, yeah, I, I need to I need to really start thinking about about doing that again um, and, and figure out a good workflow. That's the thing is the workflow and keeping up with it would, would be a really, really interesting way to do it. So um, that is all we've got for this week. The insider tip of the week is look for Microsoft is running Surface promos like every week now. Like it doesn't matter if you're in the UK, the US, like 100 bucks off, 150. Get a free goat if you buy a Surface Studio. Well, not the studio, but Surface Book. Uh, I, I really believe actually I'm... I'll, certain that this is just an inventory clearing mechanism and typically as i've said before because i've done it several times uh in 2016 look on microsoft's website to see if they screw up and start listing surface book 2 kind of stuff or surface pro 5 uh we're kind of getting into that thing where like more people are learning about it and so i expect to see some leaks come out here in the relatively near future and uh, just look to keep up and see you know if there's anything going on on the website that might might give us a little bit of a hint so there you go, guys. This has been another episode of the Sam's Report. Genuinely appreciate you watching. Uh, I love doing this. I love that you guys join me. And I always appreciate your insight. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you right here next week. And have a great weekend.